Everyone, this three questions with Neil Young. And here, <laughs> yes, Neil Young. <laughs> so what's actually amazing is Neil is the uh, superintendent at Lodi. Uh, is it Lodi Unified? In yeah, we're a unified school district. Yeah, so we actually never met before. And so we had set this up because I'm going to actually be joining you all in July. And then I saw Neil Young has joined the Zoom. And if you're Canadian, I'm like, actual Neil Young? Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah, guess he, you are actual Neil Young. You're just not the Canadian, even though you do play music, right? You're Well, here's the funny thing. So I'm born <laughs> in Oakland. So in the Bay Area in 1969 like that's the height of rock <laughs> yeah. and roll music and neil young my parents just wanted a good scottish name so they named me neil and lo and behold you know how many times in my life people are like hey do you know you're named after a famous singer i'm like yeah my parents <laughs> had no clue uh, you know i it, it i would have been elvis if that was their uh they were they were the elvis uh line of musicians well, I know, I know a bunch of my Canadian audience right now is pretty excited. I don't know if they're excited and then like, ah, <laughs> so I, I, I should have, I should have pulled out the, the acoustic <laughs> and played. I saw the needle and the damage done so we could really get our Canadian uh, I love it. connections. I love it. So Neil and I just spent like an hour talking sports and music so that you don't have to listen to us have that conversation. So we will talk about education, but I'm actually going to be uh, joining Neil in, in Lodi to uh, kick off the beginning of the year. So we wanted to connect before and just kind of learn about each other and so I can learn more about you. So Neil has actually been in Lodi, um, you know, at, at all levels. He taught there, he's an administrator there, he's superintendent there. Had like kind of a, an interesting superintendent elect thing. And I'll ask him more about that in the other podcast. But, you know, I have absolutely loved talk. I feel like guilty we didn't record it, but maybe it probably was a good idea not to record it. So it would have been a podcast for the two of us and everyone right. else would have zoned out. <laughs> right. So I know that, you know, uh, you're doing some really incredible things there. I know you have absolutely incredible staff, but when you think of a teacher who inspired you somewhere, you know, along your uh, education career, whether it's a student, you know, whether it's a, a colleague, who's someone you think of and why? Well, I, it's funny last year in my introduction, as I uh, was just kind of sharing my why and my who I actually talked about uh, a teacher, um, Kim Hudson, who I worked alongside as a brand new teacher and, and we'll talk some more about that. But as I thought deeper about uh, that question, and I was just kind of preparing for this process, I, I remember a teacher in middle school. And um, I know most people want to block out middle school in their lives. <laughs> but right. um, I was in eighth, seventh and eighth grade. I actually had him both years. Mr. Thornton at Stanley Intermediate um, Middle School, which was a seventh and eighth grade. And um he was someone who opened my eyes and connected me in a way that I actually retained the information and I actually experienced learning in a different way. And he actually helped me learn how to take tests, how to understand what conceptually, if you're just trying to memorize terms right. and, you know, definitions you don't ever learn. So Mr. Thornton to me, sadly, he passed away later um, in his life, but he was someone who really I, I respected, I loved, and I, I learned from. I love this. So we can give it a little applause for that. And uh, yeah, I, I love that. You know, that, that's, a, that's one of the biggest things that I are really passionate about that you can get, if you can get kids really good at tests, that doesn't make them great learners, but if you can get kids to be really great learners, they'll be fine on test. Mm -hmm. And and creating that space where you actually help a student not need you is mm -hmm. is really kind of the goal, right? That they can learn on their own, they can figure those things out because there is that connection. You know, some kids when they walk out of school, they're really good at school, but not mm -hmm. necessarily good at learning. And so mm -hmm. I think there's something really powerful with that. So I know you've been an administrator. I know you have you know very very background. We have a lot in common, our love of sports, our love of music, um, you know, and some of our career pathways as well. So when you think of an administrator who inspired you, um, you know, again, whether it's a student, whether it's a colleague, who's someone that you think of and why? Well, I, I definitely think I was influenced by my father. Uh, my, my dad, Wayne Young, retired as a high school principal at Oakland High School um, and where he spent his entire career um, but when I think about my career pathway and probably the one administrator who had a greater impact on me than anyone 
it was a man by the name of Dr. Odie Douglas, who was for a time our associate superintendent. And um, he was the, uh, you know, he, he held this role of authority. And when you're a newer administrator, you know, you mm -hmm. always have this fear of like overstepping your, you know, your yeah. chain of command and, and it's kind of those traditional, almost military like ways of doing things. But he was the person who connected with me and helped me uh, go from being a checkers player to a chess player. Mm -hmm. And I, I stopped thinking about the next move. And I started thinking about the bigger picture of what we're trying to accomplish in uh, education. So I would definitely say he is probably the most influential and probably the person that I learned the most from. And he crossed that line. I, I was a principal. I was working at a gate school. It was a fourth through eighth grade school. Um, but through that process, I developed a whole line of interventions for our district. I really re, um, recommitted to developing a summer school program that had meaning. And ultimately, um, he kind of set me on my path to see that bigger responsibility of moving our kids along that continuum of uh, moving towards adulthood and into the world, hopefully taking care of us one day. Was he was he in Lodi too? Uh, he was in Lodi for a while. Uh, he was also uh, north of us in Elk Grove. He also worked down in Pleasanton, which is in the Bay Area. But for a time being, I really got to know him. Um, and it was during his time when he was in Lodi as an associate superintendent of educational services. I love, I love that. And that, that is such a powerful thing because a lot of times um, we can kind of get into little battles mm -hmm. that don't necessarily are, are not for the long term, Right. And you kind of, right. you know, thinking about that, I, I do want to ask you this question. Uh, what was it like being a principal's kid? Fortunately, I didn't go to his <laughs> high school. Right. Um, I, uh, I think it was a much easier job of pulling one over on my mom than it ever was on my dad, right. because I could just see the look in his eyes. Like, uh, Neil, I do this every day of my life. <laughs> what, you know, what are you thinking? So I think in that way, um, it, it helped me, uh, not try to manipulate too often because I always lost. So that, that was a big one. Um, I think, uh, I mean, I, I always, you know, I think every young person does this. I don't want to be like my parents. I want to go in my own direction. I don't want right. to. And then lo and behold, you know, I, it was funny. Cause I, I remember going, I need to find a job where I'm going to make a lot of money. So I was talking to my friend's dad and said, I want to become an insurance broker. And he goes, all right, well, I, you know, I'd happily hire you, but if money weren't an object, what would you do? And I'm like, Oh, I've worked with kids. And he's like, well, then I'm not hiring you. And there was that moment where I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I guess I it's really ingrained in me. So that's amazing. Um, yeah, but I, I would say as a high schooler who wanted to get away with stuff as often as possible, he was never impressed, nor was he uh did he believe any right. of my garbage. Well, I you know, I think I think I asked that more out of my own, you know, parenting interest because I know <laughs> I I know like I'm way harder on my own kids than anyone else. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's like that's a consistent theme when I talk to people that you know, are in education their, you know, their kids don't get away with much, you know? Oh, I'm, my, my, uh, my dad just had to say one word. It was just, <laughs> he always says Neil. And it was yeah. like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He had very high expectations academically in high school. I can't say I lived up to those expectations. I was more <laughs> the kid who chased sparkling things and wanted to get involved in lots of things. Um, but I would definitely say, um, kind of keeping myself on the right path. I always had this moral compass and my dad was like always holding that line for me. Well, it's funny because I, you know, I have a home office and if I hear anything going on with my kids, I don't have to say anything. I just have to open my door. <laughs> it's all of a sudden, I was like, why is it so silent all of a sudden? Yeah. The other one, my dad, when I'd start arguing with my mom, he would just give me the timeout sign. <laughs> It's like, all right, we're done. We're done. I'm tapped out. <laughs> I love it. Uh, all right. Okay. Last question. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've been in a Lodi for a long time. Um, you have a lot of different experiences, you know, in education. If you can go back to your very first year of teaching, what advice would you give to yourself? Yeah, I think I would, um, 
I'd probably tell myself, Neil, just because you're being told this is the way we do things hmm. doesn't mean you can't question the why. Um, you know, to me, the one that I marvel at is why did I think that when we graded kids that to get an F represented 59% of the opportunities, whereas a D is 10%, a C is 10%, a B is 10%, and an A is 10%. So it's this, it's challenging the mindset that tradition brings. And I'd probably... I'd probably go back and say, slow down and enjoy the ride. Yeah. Um, I, I think I would look back and say, gosh, I wish I hadn't moved so quickly through this process. Um, but definitely would tell myself, maybe maybe you should start asking why. Yeah. And if there's no good answer, then maybe the answer is that's not the best way to proceed. Well, I just on that last answer, you're going to love my talk when I come up. <laughs> is that really? Is, oh, yeah, because that's like a big thing I, I talk about. I, 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 I honestly, we just kind of are on autopilot with some stuff and nobody knows why. Do you know what I mean? And it's just like we just do things because we've always done them. Like I even asked the, you know, I, a lot of times when I talk to elementary teachers, I'm like, hey, so do you know, do you know probably why you decorate your classroom every year at the beginning of the year it's probably because the teacher across the hallway decorates their classroom and then we do this and it's just kind of on autopilot i'm not saying you should have a nice classroom but why not do that with the students when they get there and now you get some ownership over the kids have ownership mm -hmm. over the classroom it's not going to look as good i, I promise oh, you that but you're going to see you're going to be able to build relationships through that and you know people are like ah oh, that's kind of a different way of thinking i still want to decorate my classroom but yeah <laughs> i still want to do it you know. As a uh, as a new male teacher, I never had that issue. I'm like, ah, we'll get there. Uh, I, I did. I did not have the cutest classroom in the world, yeah. but um, yeah, I I definitely um, I think we in education um, allow. You know, we we actually did a survey and we asked a lot of high school teachers in our district, mm -hmm. why do you, why do you do what you do in grading? And the number of answers we got which included because that's what my mom told me to do. Right. And she's right. a teacher or because that's what I thought we were supposed to do, or because that's what everyone else did. And, you know, it, it really, it, 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 you know, it's one of those things that I, I feel like we always should be asking. So well, why, why are we doing this? And grading to me, um, you know, I, I always know the pushback is, Oh, you're just trying to lower the bar. Mm -hmm. And, Yet I've never found anyone who can answer the question. So why is an F in education, zero to 59%, but 30% in baseball is a million dollar contract? <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's, it's that true. So that's, uh, that's probably what I would tell myself as a, a young teacher. I probably also tell myself relationships are the most important yep. thing because we teach children, not subjects. That that would probably be the other reminder I would give myself because without that relationship, we can't break down the barriers that exist and we lose sight of why we're in this profession. You know, a principal who I really looked up to, his name is Dr. David Pesek. He said, I'll never forget him saying this to me. He said, a teacher that's good with relationships and bad with curriculum will last a lot longer than someone who's the opposite. And I'll, I'll never forget that. Cause I, you know, he said, I can teach you how to teach the curriculum. I can't mm -hmm. teach you to like kids. Yeah. Like I'm, you're, we're in trouble if you don't like kids when you're coming in here. So I, I love it. I, I honestly, I'm like so excited to, to come out and see you all. I'm excited just to hang out with you. <laughs> I'm not lie. Just cause we have so much in common and uh, well, hopefully the Orlando magic have won the <laughs> NBA championship by, by that time, which would be the biggest comeback of all time since they're down yeah. as we speak, but. Um, you know, you actually have to have an offense to uh, to win in the NBA. Listen, listen, hey, I'm just gonna say to you, I'm gonna, I know it's gonna hurt. You know, we got, we at least got a team in there right now. I know there, no, there's no Golden State, there's no Sacramento. It doesn't matter yeah. who you like. So, yeah, I probably uh, just everyone hates me in your district for mentioning this because I got someone. <laughs> no, I, I, we, we deserve it. We, uh, we walked around a little too pompous for too long, and we needed to be humbled and. <laughs> 
<laughs> Draymond Green did a good job of ensuring that we we wouldn't go where we wanted to go. He did. I love it. All right, Neil, it was awesome talking to you. I cannot yeah. wait to join you in your district. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.